Hey everybody, Mr. Megatesh here, and Apple just released macOS Monterey Beta 7 after over three weeks of waiting. And Apple finally dropped it today. And this was after the public release of iOS 15, iPad OS 15, and Watch OS 8. And then today, Apple just dropped iOS 15 Beta 1, and then finally, macOS Monterey Beta 7. So I'm gonna go over all the information that you're gonna need to know about this update. And I'm also gonna talk about the release schedule of when to expect macOS Monterey public release, along with with the new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro. And then I've also got some open core legacy patcher news that I wanna share at the very end. We got a lot to cover, let's jump in and get started. So let's jump into some of the details of this update and a quick summary. First of all, Beta 7 is available right now as a Delta update and system preferences software update. And also it is available as an M1 IPSW restore file. The full installer and the public beta release won't be available until tomorrow, September 22nd, probably around 12 noon Central Standard Time. Another thing is, is with the 11.6 Big Sur update, there was a huge CVE with core graphics and WebKit for Safari, and Apple did not mention any of these exploits and whether they affected macOS Monterey or not. They still didn't release any security notes for macOS Monterey. Let's guess that they did because there's a new version of Safari and the new beta was released after those patches where there's no confirmation on that. Let's talk about the update sizes. If you're updating from macOS Monterey Beta 6 is going to be the smallest update as 2.4. Remember, this is just what's listed in system preferences. When you click update, it might show that the update is a little bit larger, like for example, 3.20 gigabytes in size, but you won't know that until you actually click the download or the update button, and then you'll see the download start. So if you say, well, hey, mine was larger than 2.4, take a look at that update size after you click update now. If you're updating from Beta 5, 2.6, Beta 4, 2.8 gigabytes. Also, there was a firmware update for M1 Apple Silicon devices. It was updated to 742940.68. There was also a T2 Bridge OS update, older Intel Macs from 2018 to 2020, that took it to 1916105225.4. Also, Safari version 15 was updated to 17612 2.4.2.2. And there's also no security content that was listed in Beta 7. Let's take a look at the build number of this Mac OS Monterey Beta 7 update. It is 21A5522H. Now, I wanted to show a screenshot of what the update sizes look like, like I mentioned earlier, is that it's 2.36 gigabytes, close to that 2.4 average. And when you clicked on update now, look what it says. It says that the update size is actually 3.07. So as long as it's really close to that, that's the size difference that I was talking about. This machine's already updated, so I wanted to go over to the T2 Mac that I have set up that we can show the software update mechanism. Now, there's already a couple of people mentioning that they were not seeing the software update if you see the one, it's already ran a software update in the background and it's picked up that there's something there. So when you click on it, you should see Beta 7 available. But if you don't see anything available in here, click on the window inside here and do a Command R to refresh the window. And then it should check one more time to make sure without having to close software update and reopening it again. Okay, next let's talk about how long it takes to install the macOS Monterey Beta 7 update. I always time how long it takes on a 2020 M1 Mac Mini, one of the fastest Macs available today. Normally, if you have a 2016 to 2019 for example Intel Mac is going to be a little bit slower but maybe not too much slower so first the preparing which happens in the software update pane when it's preparing the update and getting it ready took 10 minutes the installing time when it rebooted to the black screen with the progress bar took 18 minutes with a total install time from software update to reboot to install to back to a usable desktop 28 total minutes Let's talk about macOS Monterey Beta 7 fixes. Now, in this particular update, there's not too many fixes that might affect you or you might be interested in. For example, known issues, rounded corners in buildings and maps, and then background color on tab buttons in the tab bar. It's like, okay, that's great that they're putting that in here, but we're more focused in on bigger issues like, for example, universal control. There's nothing in here that even mentions universal control in here, and that's what we're all wondering. At least do what they did for SharePlay and mention that SharePlay has been 
been postponed, at least until a later version of Mac OS and iOS. But there's nothing in there about this. The good news is that SharePlay is in iOS 15.1 Beta 1 for people to be able to test with, which is great news. So hopefully that's coming soon. But there's nothing in here that says anything about Mac OS Monterey in Beta 7. So we'll have to keep an eye on that one. Other things are that you might be interested in is if you're watching a full video in Apple TV or the music app and you can't exit full screen using the on-screen UI, press the escape to exit full screen to be able to get out of there as a workaround. And Xcode 12.5.1 will no longer launch in Mac OS Monterey Beta 7. So let's take a look at that. If we look here, I have Xcode 12.5.1 installed. So we can hit Command I on the Xcode and you can already tell with the prohibited sign that this thing's not gonna launch. And as we can see here, it's running 12.5.1 right here and it no longer launches. What Apple says to do is that you have to upgrade to Xcode 13 production that just came out with the iOS and iPadOS releases to be able to do that. And as you can see here in the in the bar here, Xcode uh, 13 will launch and that's the beta version. But if you download the production version, it will start to launch in Mac OS Monterey Beta 7 and later. Now let's talk about some new features. There is a couple that I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna talk about Universal Control first. If we look at the way Universal Control is set up on Mac OS Monterey Beta 7, the advance button in displays is still gone. I put it back by putting the um, feature flags and the domain and the ensemble plist in there to reactivate it. Mentioned in my previous video on how to test universal control between two Macs, I put it back in here so we can see it in here, which is nice, but again, it's still not working. Plus what's even worse is that it's not even picking up the other two Macs uh, on, on beta six. So I think I gotta get those to beta seven before they'll start to show up where I can do the, do the workaround again. The next thing I wanna talk about is the sidecar preference pane. If we look in Big Sur, and on Mac OS Monterey Beta 5 and below, we'll see Sidecar in here and in the system preferences. But if we go to Beta 6 and 7, it's no longer here. What I found out later, after I mentioned that it was gone, is those settings are now inside display. So if we go into displays, if we go into add display and then click on the iPad that we want to connect to, then we will be able to get these display settings in here. See, we got the display settings here now. We click on that and then we've got our sidecar. Let me zoom in a little bit on this. Then we've got our sidecar preferences. And then we can also click on the advanced that I put in there by modifying that PLS file. And this is what universal control is going to look look like the settings once it's fully enabled properly without having to do the workaround. That is the sidecar preferences that have changed in location. Okay, the next new feature and basically the only feature that has been found so far in Mac OS Monterey Beta 7 is a new focus notification. So if you look here, I've got this iPad loaded up here, my iPad running iOS 15, and I have focus selected, and you can see all the focus controls in here. If I turn on do not disturb, and I'm logged in with my Apple ID on both devices, the do not disturb settings will go across to the Mac too. So we'll look over here. I've got the Mac OS Monterey Beta 7 machine over here so you can see the menu bar. Let's turn on do not disturb over here on the iPad by clicking the radio button. And then we'll see over here, there's the do not disturb and we've got our brand new do not disturb notification bar. If you're on the Mac and then you've turned that on, the Mac also realizes and should respect those settings, which is a really nice feature. And I'm gonna probably go into to focus a little bit more later in another video because I think it's a really great feature. And finally, on Reddit, there's a user named Jack Hinkle and he posted there that he found a brand new keyboard setup assistant screen. What I did is I plugged in a non-Apple keyboard and that's how you can get the keyboard assistant screen to pop up. Now, what's interesting though is, is that he mentioned it was on beta seven, but it looks like this might have been added in, in an earlier beta because this MacBook Pro is a beta six machine and it still has has the new uh, screen. But again, this is the first time someone has found that. So it was really nice find. If you go here, you can click continue and you can see this new layout for the keyboard setup assistant, which is really nice. 
Now let's go over the benchmarks. I ran the benchmark on this Mac Mini M1 late 2020 on Mac OS Monterey Beta 6, and it ran a single core of 1720 and a multi-core of 7450. And once I upgraded to Mac OS Monterey Beta 7, I've got a 1737 single core and a 7370 on a multi-core. So again, really close. There's always gonna be a small or a slight variance in there. But again, as always I mentioned, we only run the Geekbench score just to make sure that there's not a one of the scores that is really out of whack to mention that maybe there's a problem with the current beta release. Now let's talk about some open core legacy patcher and unsupported Mac news. First of all, if you didn't see already, I put out a huge video on how to install Mac OS Big Sur using open core legacy patcher and is basically an ultimate guide. This video is an hour and seven minutes long and don't get me wrong, it is long, but the whole point of it is to put everything that you might need to know into one video. And I've got over 45 chapters in here to try to cover everything. So check that out if you wanted to see more information on that. Now let's talk about the Mac OS Monterey in, Mac, in Beta 7. Right off the bat, there is an issue with NVIDIA Kepler acceleration support in Mac OS Monterey. Apple removed the Kepler texts inside Mac OS Monterey Beta 7, so they're no longer supported. So which Macs have the Kepler uh, GPUs? So there's a nice handy list right here that shows you most of the Macs that have a Kepler GPU. So it's a bunch of iMacs and some MacBook Pros that have that. So if you have one of these Macs right now, I would hold off from upgrading to Mac OS Monterey Beta 7. Stay on Mac OS Monterey Beta 6 until we have some more information. Also, I wanted to talk about the Bluetooth issues that are still going on. Those might be fixed soon. And right now, if you upgrade and Bluetooth's not working, I have a workaround in my Monterey Open Core Legacy Patcher video where you run a quick command in terminal. You basically kill the processes. Then you go up to the Bluetooth um, menu bar item or into system preferences, toggle off and on, and then Bluetooth will work until you reboot again. And also, like there's going to the accelerated graphics for Mac OS Monterey is coming along very well too. So we might be seeing that come soon for 2008 to 2011 Macs. And we might be seeing Open Core Legacy Patcher 0.2.5 come out really soon, which is going to be really exciting because there's going to be some extra things in support there that I'm going to go over in some videos upcoming in the future here. So that's unsupported Mac news for Mac OS Monterey and Mac OS Big Sur. The last thing I wanted to talk about is when do I expect Mac OS Monterey production to be released? So let's take a look at the calendar here. I pulled up 2020 because I wanted to use last year as a really good example. There's no hard and steady rules here when it comes to Apple. They basically put on their own schedule. No one knows all the leaks that have come out this year. A lot of them have been wrong. No one knows exactly when this stuff's gonna come out. Mac OS Big Sur went to 10 beta releases here. So that gives you an an idea. We're only here in the process if Apple follows the Mac OS Big Sur beta release schedule. So we still have an 8, a 9, and a 10. And then remember what they what they also did is they released 11.0.1 because right here between 10.14 and 10.28 they started producing the M1 MacBook Air, the Mini, and the MacBook Pro 13 inch M1. And what did they put on there? Mac OS Big Sur 11.0. And that's why they jumped to 11.1 right away because they're not gonna stop re releasing changes and fixes just because they have to install a Mac OS version on the hardware that's being produced at the MacBook Pro factory. They're gonna ship these new MacBooks, the 14 inch and the 16 inch MacBook Pros with probably 12.0 Mac OS Monterey. And then they might be starting to work on 12.0.1. It might be 12.1, kind of like what they're doing with iOS 15.1. We'll have to see, we won't know until at least another few betas but once we see a jump like this when it goes past the beta 10 into a different version number that's when we know that the macbooks are being produced at the factory and they already have 12.0 installed on them so once they get into customers hands they'll be able to install them software update right away so that kind of gives us a picture of what to expect here the first version of mac os came out on october 12th of 2020 and the first m1s were announced two days before 
before that on November 10th. If you think about it, if we look at the calendar again, this is where we were. We go back to November 10th. That was the Mac event where they announced the M1 Max. And then two days later on Thursday, they released the first version of Mac OS Big Sur. And they're probably going to do the same thing with Mac OS Monterey. They're probably going to have a, an event late October or maybe even early November again that they'll announce the new MacBook Pros. And then hopefully two days later, we'll see our first version of Mac OS Monterey. That's my prediction. If we're following what Apple has done previously, this is what we might see. And that's Mac OS Monterey Beta 7. Are you going to install it? Are you excited about the new MacBook Pros coming? Do you think that release schedule that I just talked about sounds right? Let me know in the comments. You know that I enjoy chatting with every single one of you and I really appreciate all your views. If you found this video valuable, it would help me out if you gave it a thumbs up or shared it. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, I truly appreciate it and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.